Hi, welcome back. In the first part, we started to look at why it was so important to choose a sensible or logical range for parameter values when you perform an optimization. And I started to say that this was even more important when you were using walk forward analysis as your choice of optimization technique. So let's now take a look at why that is. So this is the optimization surface that we used in our previous example, where we said that the area to the left of the surface represented the parameter values that were in line with a trend based system premise. And the peaks in the surface that you see on the right hand side are more aligned to a mean reversion system. So by using this wide range of parameter values that encompasses multiple different system premises, this has a huge impact on the walk forward analysis process. So let's say that in stage one of the walk forward analysis, the optimization finds that this is the best area on the surface. And so it's these parameter values that get passed forward into the walk forward validation phase. And we've already said that these represent a mean reverting type system. Now it's possible that in the second stage, which of course is over a different period of time, here the best performing parameters might come from this area on the left of the surface. And because these are the parameter values that represent the trend following system, these are the values that get carried forward into the walk forward validation stage. And yet again, for the pre-live optimization, this is over a different period of time, and so it's likely that the best parameter values will come from a different part of the optimization surface, such as this one indicated here, which again aligns to a mean reverting type system. So the problem now becomes obvious. In our walk forward validation phases, we've actually been validating completely different types of system. In the first one, we validated a mean reversion system. And in the second one, we validated a trend following system, which of course means the whole process is flawed. So hopefully you can see here the types of issues you have by not choosing sensible parameters in line with the premise of the system you're testing when using walk forward analysis is an absolute disaster. But again, there's an important point here that I want to stress. I'm not saying that you shouldn't look for different systems in the optimization space. You absolutely should. But the important point is that you don't mix them up within the same optimization process. So here, if you're using parameter values that are aligned to a mean reversion system, then just optimize using those values. And using the walk forward analysis process, this will allow you to validate that system properly in the walk forward validation stages. And then the pre-live optimization, of course, has determined the best parameter values for the market conditions right now in line with a mean reversion system. And then, of course, we could run a completely different walk forward analysis using a range of values that were appropriate to a trend following system. And because we're doing that, the walk forward validation is based on that type of system and the pre-live optimization is giving us the best parameters for the market conditions now, again, for that type of system. And so this now brings us on to my final point that I mentioned earlier on, which is the reason why it is acceptable to sometimes break this rule. And of course, the reason for that is to do a reconnaissance of other types of systems that you can exploit with your algo. And this is something that very often occurs when using price action based systems like I showed in the first example in part one, where you're looking across a wide range of pullback percentages, extension percentages and so on in the price action. And there have been two occasions in the past when I've set out to optimize one particular type of system and as part of doing that, I've recognized that there were certain values that also produced very good results. 
But the important thing here is that you don't just accept those values and trade them as part of a new system. You must investigate why that is the case. So I'd never condone trading any system if you didn't implicitly understand what the premise behind that system was. But again, for absolute clarity, when you do perform one of these reconnaissance optimizations on a much wider range of parameter values than you would normally, this is purely for the purposes of identifying those other potential systems. But then of course you'd have to run separate optimizations for each of those that you did identify. Now sometimes when you do this, you'll notice this happen, where towards the edge of your surface, the performance starts to increase. And clearly when you see this, it's always good practice to then run the optimization again, but this time extending the parameters further to further investigate that area of the surface. Okay, so I hope you found that useful and I hope you can now understand the importance of separating out the two processes of optimizing the systems and also the reconnaissance and the investigation of additional systems on the surface. But before you go, let me just put one question to you. Do you have any subjects that you would like me to cover in future videos? So maybe that's a problem that you're currently up against? or something that you'd just like more information about. So if there's anything at all that you can think of that you'd benefit from, then please just drop a comment right below and I'll consider all of those and hopefully put some videos together that directly address those issues or those concerns that you have. So in the meantime, please do give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and until next time, trade safe.